live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host this week, John Troyer, here at the OpenStack Summit in Boston, Massachusetts. Happy to welcome back to the program, Lee Doyle, who's Principal Analyst with Doyle Research. Lee, nice to see you. Nice to see you, thanks for having me. All right, so networking's your, 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 your main space. Absolutely. Uh, we've talked about networking for a bunch of years here at the show. Last year, I mean, telecommunication, NFV, uh, this year it, it seems like half the people on the main stage worked for you know some big telco right. uh, and NFV, buzz on the edge. Uh, before we get into some of the initial piece, what, what, what's your take on the OpenStack community in general uh, and the show? We're getting you know getting towards the end, so what's your take been this week? Right, well, always great to have the show in Boston, yeah. my hometown. Um, so OpenStack and, and telecom have been going to get hand in hand for you know, since the beginning of, of OpenStack, really, and a lot of contributions. Um, and use from you know some of the big service providers who are here, you know AT and T, Verizon, uh, some others. So it's really becoming a, a OpenStack's really becoming a good platform for their NFV and virtualization modernization efforts. Yeah. It, before we get into some of the the, the cool new stuff, uh, core networking. I mean, Neutron's one of those things we've been banging on for years. Right. It seems like it's matured to a bit, right. but always the one. I mean, networking's never done, right? We're always cranking on it, uh, doing new things. Anything from some of the. What do you hear about the stability? Uh, you know, what the, the community hears is is the is the networking thriving good? Uh, you know, any feedback you've uh, you've had? Sure. No, always a good question, and always a question that, that I ask. <clears throat> you know, folks. I think we've seen significant maturity. In Neutron, it's stable, it performs, it does a lot of the things you know, we expect networks uh, to do, but there are still are third-party network solutions. If you look at a Big Switch or a Cumulus or, or others, say we, you don't want to use net Neutron or you want to enhance it, you know, feel free to, to work with us to, to provide even better networking. Yeah, in, in a broad trend, uh, c companies you mentioned, they're software companies. Absolutely. Uh, networking, uh, you know, is like boxes and cabling and, uh, you know, things like that. How is that, you know, software eating the world, uh, you know, s stack up when it comes to the network right. space? I mean, I, I think the majority of the value in networking, as in, you know, IT is in, in software, right? The majority of the revenue is in boxes which are hardware and, and software integrated. So we're, you know, tech, from a technology standpoint, it's very software driven. From a market standpoint, it's it's still box driven and we're, we're in between those two and that's what makes this uh, a very interesting point in time. Um, maybe you could tease apart for us a little bit. Um, for people on the enterprise side, they're used to hearing the letters SDN, right? right? Here, uh, if you're talking to, to telecom NFE, slightly different uh, takes on some similar problems about service management and delivery. Right. In OpenStack, are the same uh, bits? Are the same? Is is Neutron used uh, by the enterprise for SDN? Is the same way it's used? Same way it's used uh, at the network core by the service providers? Or are these really two different planes that are developing? Right. And it's a bit of a complex question. I mean. At Doyle Research, what I've done to simplify is we're talking about software-based networking. <clears throat> so that includes SDN, that includes NFV. Those things over their overlap, and people get very hung up. Like, what does SDN <clears throat> mean? It's separation control and data plane. What does network virtualization, network function virtualization means? Well, that's an Etsy telecom standard for taking boxes in the telecom network and turning them into software. Um, so I try to get away from that and, and, and move towards, okay, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Well, with OpenStack, we're trying to deliver networking, right? It's going to be in software. There still might be uh, and, and probably is some form of Ethernet switch or other, uh, other box that's moving the bits, right? So um, I think that a lot of the, the way I think about it is some of the SDN products that, that I mentioned, like a uh, Cumulus or Big Switch, um, you know, would be enhancements to something that's a core function of, of OpenStack, which I wouldn't t traditionally call SDN, but that's yeah. my view. Lee, 
Uh, speak to us. What, what have you heard about Edge? It was one of those things we heard, kind of the buzz coming in. Um, there's a couple of different definitions. You know, telecommunications people have a very, you know, that's the edge of our network. Right. Um, when I talk to enterprise people, oh, it's kind of IoT and sensors. Uh, so, you know, what are you hearing about Edge? You know, how's network play uh, across all of those? Right. Well, I mean, Edge is very much a. Um, you know how you define it, or in, or which environment you're you're talking about, right? So traditionally in the telecom world, you've got your core of your network and you've got your edge of the network, and what how that's defined in between because you have uh, network capabilities all throughout, um, all throughout the environment. So. Um, SD WAN has by far been the hottest. Um, Technology, not just in terms of buzz, but in terms of actual deployment, uh, both in enterprise and service provider. In the service provider space, that sort of blurs into what the VCPE offerings are. So that's you hear, you know, Verizon, Telefonica just made an announcement um, with Nuage on that, and so you can you can go through all the major service providers, either they're um, incorporating SD-WAN functionality into the VCPE, or they're announcing SD-WAN functionality separately. Yeah. Is there any connection between the SD-WAN stuff and, and, and OpenStack? I hadn't heard it talked about. Of course, hot technology. Uh, we covered Riverbed's announcements uh, last year. Viptela, of course, has right. been on the Cube a number of times, which is acquired by Cisco. Where, where do you see SDN playing out? Is this the year that it just becomes a feature? Does it still stay as a distinct uh, you know, market segment? Yeah, so on the on the OpenStack question, OpenStack traditionally is sort of a cloud-based, the bigger, you know, data center thing. And I, there are elements, of course, that you can use and leverage from OpenStack, you know, at the edge. Um, so in terms of SD WAN, I mean, we're at the the hockey stick phase. So we're you know, markets going straight up, starting to see well, wide-scale deployments across a large number of verticals. Usually, the verticals that have lots of branches. So you look at financial services, you look at retail, but you can extend to government and healthcare and any, anywhere where you're trying to do a lot of connectivity um, in between distri in distributed environments. And the real change is that previously you do a hub and spoke network. You get MPLS, you take the, the information from the branch, and you move it to your corporate data center or data centers. Well now, well, cloud, SaaS, the information doesn't need to go to the data center. In fact, if it goes to the data center, you add a lot of latency. So um, SD-WAN is adding um, the intelligence, the traffic steering, the ability to manage multiple networks, um, and the, to move away from MPLS and, and towards more cost-effective internet uh, connectivity. So that there's still, you know, 25, Viptela was the biggest company, you know, taking out, taken out recently, but there's still 24 other solutions and probably more, you know, being announced, uh, you know, over the next six months. Wow, so. 24, huh? Some, at least, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious, we, we talk about uh, hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, and of course, networking is one of the things that has to tie all of that together. Uh, how do things like, you know, Kubernetes uh, and, you know, just this, the, the public to private uh, piece, you know, how's that shaking out in the network space? Well, I mean, networks have to support multi-cloud environments, so yeah. they need to support what's happening privately, publicly, uh, VMware, you know, Red Hat, um, OpenStack, obviously, and, and soon to be containers. And each of those are a, a little bit different. Um, and so, can you have a, a network solution that spans all of that. I mean, one of the things that uh, VMware is very um, public about talking about, and was talking about at this show, is their ability to to do the hybrid, you know, public-private. And Red Hat talks about um, that, and I spent a lot of time last week, you know, on that topic as well. So, as you're talking with network engineers, both I guess both in service providers and out at the enterprise. Uh, we've talked about all this change with hybrid cloud. We're now switching from a, a, maybe a hardware-centric model to, to more software-defined, literally. Are you seeing uh, new skill sets needed for these network engineers, automation? Um, you know, just, it, does the job change as we go forward? Uh, it absolutely it changes. So when you look at a traditional CCIE, which is Cisco certified, you know that's about Cisco APIs, it's about Cisco boxes in a world where there's a lot of other software elements and you've got to tie to different orchestration, different management, pu public, private cloud, 
there are absolutely is different um, skill sets and there needs to be an evolution. And it's one of the challenges of the networking industry because there simply aren't enough people who are familiar with building sort of the new style software driven networks uh, as there need to be. With, with all this acceleration and change, how are you seeing people, say, uh, at the management layer, of, the management layer of, by people, the, the CXO layer, right. how are they dealing with all this change? And, uh, you know, uh, new technologies, emerging technologies, uh, things, things are not slowing down. No, and, and there's a lot of, I mean, so AT&T has a large scale public, you know, training program to try to get to its people, um, you know, skilled up to to the new technologies. I'm, I know a lot of the other telcos who have been less less public about it are doing the same. Um, if you go to um, you know a large user network user groups like Onug, you know they're talking about new skill sets and how to how to train there. Um, there's also the organizations. Do you do you blend uh, compute, storage, application, and networking folks all in on the same team? And I know you guys have talked about that uh, previously, but how quickly do organizations do that, or do they remain, you know, relatively traditional? And the, the, C, the, the CIOs are are thinking about that. They're reorganizing, but it's not going to be just, you know, snap your fingers and hey, everyone's ready for. Um, you know, the new software-driven world. Yeah, I, I mean, the, it's a fascinating thing, of course. You know, networking industry tends to move a little bit slow, uh, especially enterprise, and, you know, we've been talking about fast and agile for a lot of things, right. but that does not uh, characterize that. Uh, that. That being said, feels like things do move faster, uh, you know, what, what, what's, what's the general attitude for you hear from customers? Are, are they still, you know, are they still reticent to, to move forward? Are, are they slow to move those processes? You kind of hear it's like things like security tend to realize I need to update more. I, I need to move forward. What, what right. do you hear when you're talking to customers kind of today versus you know, let's say even only five years ago? Sure. So I mean, you know, we're we're five years in on an NFV and, and Etsy, and I think we're you know making significant progress. You hear a lot about this at at the the shows and um, where the telcos are and implementing NFV, but they're still it's in the the initial phases. And you know, we've been talking about SDN and the enterprise for about the same amount of time, and you know, mainstream enterprises. Uh, you know the, the hyperscale guys. You know Google, Amazon, Facebooks. I mean, yeah. I mean they're they're already there, and and they're very innovative, and people are um, following their example and leveraging that. But I think we're we're still early in the um, truly software-driven uh, networking game. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions I always have is, what size company you are and what capability you have. What do you do internally versus? Do you just adopt a platform that's going to do all of that stuff right. for you? We, you know, I think we, we, you and I talked about this, you know, years ago about you know, you know, network fabric type of topologies, you know, all, all the different pieces that went out. There's certain size organization, you know, you're going to just go to someone else that, that can do that. Um, I, I hear some pieces, you know, Kubernetes might be the, the same uh, kind of things. Yeah, w right. Do you do you see that people just saying, hey, I'm not, I, I'm just going to, it's not outsourcing anymore, but I'm going to be more strategic, focus on my business my applications and let somebody else handle the underlying stuff. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if IT or the network or branch operations is not central to, to what you do, yeah. I think outsourcing it makes perfect sense. And that may be outsourcing it to a reseller yeah. or someone to manage it for you. It might still be on-prem. Yeah. But you know, more and more, the workloads are going to the cloud. Yeah, so. and, and the reason I, I, I move away from outsourcing, out, the old outsourcing was my mess for less. Right. And, and this is a more strategic, what piece of the stack do I own or what do I run right. versus someone else. And it's not, <laughs> I told you this is the exact configuration in something you run. It's I'm buying, you know, <laughs> You know, X bandwidth, X performance, things like that, and it's you know something that's updated a little bit more frequently, and they manage that piece, and it's it's just further down the stack than I care to look at. Sure. Yeah. Well, there's new managed service providers who you know look at your WAN and and you know networks, so that comes into play. The the leading uh, telcos would you know certainly want to play a, a role here and beyond just providing the pipe. You know, they they want to take care of your networking challenges for you. So there's a lot of new options. You know, for folks who who if they don't want to um, build and buy and sweat. Do you see a difference between what's going on inside the U.S. and then in the rest of the world? 
in terms of the telcos and uh, services they're rolling out and ambitions and where they want to play? Um, there, there are clearly geographic differences when you get in to the telecom, but it's it's not a simple saying, you know, X geography is doing mm -hmm. that. You almost have to go operator um, by operator there. Anything that you've seen here at the show, this is your first summit. You've been following, this, obviously, the space for a very long time. Right. Uh, anything you've seen here, either sessions or vendors or users doing interesting things or anything that's excited you recently uh, that that your areas that you're following and interested in yeah i mean i mean obviously the passion here for openstack is is undeniable and you know got a lot of people who are um, committed to the community and um, you know they're aware of the the networking um, challenges and and where we you know the significant strides we've made you know with openstack networking but also you know where we need to go you know in the future so it's exciting to be here and and uh, fun to see everyone yeah uh, Last thing I want to ask, Lee, is there anything that, you know, advice you want to give the, the, the community, things that you heard of uh, from users or you observed uh, where we, we should mature over the next, you know, iteration of, uh, of the solution set? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, you know, as a technology-driven um, community, it's always incumbent on, on the community to just really explain the business benefits and, and talk about how this technology is, is really solving real-world um, problems and it is, but it's just it's making that translation uh, sometimes is, is challenging. All right, well, Lee Doyle, great to catch up with you, and like yourself, thrilled to be here in in Boston for a technology show. Uh, hope to have more of these, uh, you know, here as always. It's our second week back to back uh, here in Boston amongst all the other shows that uh, we we've been doing at Silicon Angle Media. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, John and I have a few more interviews left as we get to wrap up three days of programming here from the OpenStack Summit. Thanks for watching theCUBE.